page 167. Theme from Eine Kleine Nachtmusik. A little night music. It's a very famous melody from Mozart. It's not a keyboard solo, but this is a nice arrangement. 4-4 four, four time, we're still in the key of D major, two sharps, got eighth notes, and we're moving around all over the place. However, when you learn to recognize these patterns, it's not quite so bad. So on page 166, they introduce you to the one octave arpeggios. Let's talk about that. You know what an arpeggio is. It's where the notes go up and down. They go up or go down. It's an arpeggiated chord. That's all. Okay. Well, an octave, you know what an octave is. It's letter to letter. So an arpeggio is simply going to go up letter to letter or down letter to letter. So it's here. So I went up here. Ta da, that's it. Fingering wise, well, you play it's like a C chord, you're here. But I want an octave, I use what's called an extended position. I extend out to the octave. And that means I gotta use these fingers for the other notes. It's the fingering for an extended octave, for an extended arpeggio pattern, chord. And the D, D major. And you'll see these in music, that's why I've even suggested at times that we use that fingering. So it would be here, maybe the last notes were here, and I'd say extend out and do here. But this is the fingering I'm suggesting. It's very common and I highly recommend you get used to it. Left hand, well, people don't agree on this left hand. Uh, if I'm going to extend out for an octave, I'm going to use four, not three. I highly encourage you to do the same. Even for D, I still use four. A lot of people will use three for that one. I use four, I was taught in college, that when five and four, or five is involved and you need another finger, if it is a third or less, use fourth finger. If it goes above that, then you can use third finger. So even with D, that is a third, an interval of a third. So I use fourth finger. It's a bit of a stretch, but you need to be able to stretch your fingers out. It will really help you later on, so keep at it, and they will gradually stretch out more. You don't have to force it or not, well, you may have to at first, but it's, it, don't, it should not be painful, is what I'm saying. So in, in, use fourth finger on these for the most part. If it's a th uh, here, that would be third, because that's a fourth, an interval of a fourth, a third. And that's the way I teach it, and that's the way I do it. So, for knock music, let's cover this one hand at a time, because it's getting a little weird. You're starting with here and here. Now, what position is that? Well, actually, if you look at the next measure and see, see the notes, you got to look ahead and see what notes are there. You're using these notes. You're in an extended position there. And it's fourth finger on the F sharp. We've already been through that, remember? And that's the fingering for the start. That's a hand position to start. Isn't that weird? But it is. One and two and three and four and one and two and four and. Let's lift up, move. Generally, I don't like using the same finger. You could, if you wanted to measure three, go ahead and play the first one with fourth, and then three, and then five. You just have, you use four for one, and then you come down. Uh, and then for measures five, they want thumb again? No. I don't like that thumb. That's dangerous. I think that's a bad habit. So for measure five, for the first D, second finger. And then thumb. Then you can get there because you're right there. And so uh, start a measure four again. It's one and two and three and four and one and two and three. And they say crossover. And three. I use fourth finger on that E. And then for measure seven, I don't play a thumb until the quarter note. Again, the last line, 
one and two and three and four. I just thumb, why not? Left hand, well, it's got all kinds of things going on too. Look at the first line and see the notes. You're here and here, and then we got it here and here. So we're in this position. You're extended, and we got the chords. So it's one and two. And I'm staying spread out throughout this. One and two, three and four. Now sing thumb again. No. Come up and second finger, and then four one. finger on C sharp. And then for the D chord, I do a 3-2-1 first, and then a 5-3-1. I don't want to go 5-5. Five, five. There's times you have to do that though. But if I can, I don't, and I don't have to. So, I, I, so, so if I can figure out another way, then I don't, and here's another way. It's 3-2-1. I'm staying in this position for the first chord, and then coming in. Measure nine, and they're saying two. It's okay, I guess. Not the best, but it works. The problem is now we're going to be using different fingers in the hands at the same time, and it's going to get all tongue tied and everything. So watch out. Go real, real super slow. Three, one and two. So there's a rest on two, huh? One and two. It's all connected. And four and one and two and two four weird. I went a little fast. You take it as slow as you got to go and just work it out. If you have to, just concentrate on that one measure or two measures at a time until you can sort of get it without the hesitations. Take your time. Go real slow. It's really okay. Then once you can play it through without the hesitations and no wrong notes and your fingers are moving around where they need to go, then we can start this articulation. Well, you have two new toes at the beginning. I mean, hang on to that for the full count. Don't cut it a little short. And then on the rest, you come up. And then staccato. And again, staccato. Short staccato. And then again, tenuto. And then on major five, play this legato in the right hand and a nice light wrist staccato in the left. Lift up before the phrase. Lift up. And at the end, that's a staccato and an accent, and then just an accent. Okay. You can do that. Try the dynamics. There's not a lot in dynamics. It's loud and that's both hands. It says open the hands. What they mean is extend out. Open them up. To extended position. It's the, their term of how they do it. I says, okay, fine. But loud on both. You stay loud until measure five, then you come down to moderately soft. That's the right hand. Lift up. The left has to be soft. And all these staccato soft, soft. So it's too easy for the left hand to drown the right hand out because of these chords. Don't. Keep the left hand really soft. Until you get down to measure nine at the end, then you go back to loud, both hands. 
Yeah. Speed, this is a happy piece. It's, it's however fast you think it should go to... Uh, slow down or nothing it's just all the way to the end it's your allegro whatever you think allegro is not super fast but it has to be accurate hmm. let's play this together very slowly to double check the notes and the rhythms I'm not going to do any dynamics there isn't much to do anyway but I'll try and do the accents those are kind of important hmm. so I'll give us four counts let's try it together one and two and ready and go and one and two and and four and three and four and one and two and two and four and Two. One and two. 